Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and actually this is a special episode because I'm here live at Adobe Max in LA for the 2014 Max. And I thought I'd take a little bit of time before I head over to the keynote and show you what's new in Adobe InDesign CC 2014 for the October release. So let's dive in and take a look at three things. The first new thing is the brand new Adobe or color theme tool. When I click on this tool, what it allows me to do is here, I'll move this over, is I can go in and I can sample colors from images. And instead of me just getting an eyedropper and sampling individual colors, I can actually sample the entire image spectrum and get the colors from that theme. Now, why might this be useful? Well, now that I've placed the image, uh, here I'll show you on some other layouts here, some other layers, I'll turn this layer off and turn on the next one. And as you can see, the colors were sampled from this guitar image and then used throughout the rest of the design. So that way, if you're you know, hurting for colors and you're you know, trying to decide what colors to use, just simply go ahead and place your image sample the colors from that using the new color theme tool and then you can go ahead and add those colors uh, to your swatches so for example even if you don't like the colors that were picked you can even uh, here's a little shortcut we can go down and make them more colorful bright dark deep and muted so i kind of like the deep version of those colors and now i can go ahead and add those to my color swatches so now when i go to my swatch library I get my normal swatches that are there, but now in the new groups, if I come all the way down, I've got the new one that I've just added, the new deep theme with all of those swatches in CMYK because I grabbed them from a CMYK image. If I grab them from an RGB image, then they'll be RGB. So I get all the colors now ready for me to use, and I can then pick and choose which ones I want to use for what parts of my design. So that's the new color theme tool. Now along the same lines, here let me go back to my layers here and I'll show you one more, same thing, grab from the orange guitar and then use throughout the rest of the layout for that particular um, spread. And let's go back and now let's take a look at uh, the brand new Adobe Color Themes panel. So let's go here and we'll go to Color, Adobe Color Themes. Now. This may look very familiar to you, especially for those of you who know uh, Cooler, K-U-L-E-R. Well, Cooler, as of today, is being rebranded Adobe Color. So now there's a new color themes panel, just like the one we introduced last time in Photoshop. It is now in InDesign, where many of you were like, yeah, it's, you know, we want this in InDesign. Okay, so now it's in InDesign. So you can create new colors right here on the spot and create uh, swatches to go with them. You can explore and see what the community out there is creating and do searches and find by names like, hey, I'm trying to design for a, you know, a new car brochure and then just search new car and you'll see new car, car themes. And of course, your themes, the ones that you've been creating uh, either manually via the website, manually via the apps, or if you have an iOS device, you can create them uh, using your favorite iOS device with the new color theme app. So let's go ahead and see if we can take a look at that. Let me see if I can get my device loaded here. And now that I've got my uh, iPad up here, of course this is an iPhone app, but I'm going to go ahead and launch it on my iPad because we're going to use the iPad in just a moment here for something else. But here's the new branded version of this app. And as you can see, it shows my themes. I can hit the plus sign and I can either grab uh, themes or grab colors from an image similar to what I did in InDesign or I can even use the camera. So if I bring up the camera, I'm here in my hotel room in LA. I can kind of scan around the room picking some colors here and let's go ahead and sample that and then we can uh, go ahead and call this uh, LA hotel theme. You know, we don't need the word theme, but there you are. So now that's been synced and saved up to Creative Cloud just that easily. I didn't have to do anything else but name it. Now when I head back to InDesign, as soon as I go off that panel and then come back over, we get our new LA hotel uh, swatches ready to use. So that's just how easy it is to not only use colors that are already in your images, grabbing those colors from creating them with the color theme panel 
or grabbing them from the community or even using an iOS device to capture them with and then use them in your designs. But there's one more thing. So we talked about the color theme tool. We talked about the color theme panel, but there's one gigantic big new thing here in InDesign CC for 2014. So let me get out of these tools and let's talk about uh, another new enhancement to EPUBs. Now I know uh, many of you have probably been, if you've been watching my videos, you've been kind of probably paying attention to InDesign uh, in the June update supporting fixed EPUB layout. That was the big new thing. Uh, that we can now make a document like this, turn it into an EPUB, and it looks just like this. Well, we took it up quite a notch in this latest update. So here's the document, as we can see. Looks kind of cool, nice cover, great design, so forth and so on. But let's actually look at this as an ebook on our device. So once again, let's see if we have the uh, iPad we can bring up. There we are. I'll make it actually a little bigger so we can see it. And on the iPad, I've got this as an EPUB that I exported directly from InDesign. So I'm gonna go ahead and just launch it on the iPad. And you saw it come up and you kind of saw like briefly there a little animation. You saw uh, the little uh, transparent color panels come in. You saw something fade up. Well, let's continue that theme. Let's go ahead and switch pages. And when we switch pages, wow, we see animations. We see the table of contents animate in. We see the text animate in. And we even see a slideshow animate in. And that basically uh, gave me, well, something I hadn't seen before in, in my EPUBs, a slideshow. Let's continue on. And we're looking at this. We, uh, of course, have a video down there. We saw a video before. But we see even that animation at the top of the music notes or the sound notes continuing to play as we continue to look at our EPUB. We keep come over here, same thing. We've got uh, the animation that happened. We got the video animating in. We got the text on the left animating in. Then we got the music notes at the bottom continuing to animate. And then slowly but surely, the buttons appeared on the actual violin. And those are buttons that I can tap and they will they will actually play sounds. Each one's set to a different MP3 file. So I can actually choose different pieces that I want to play based on the buttons that I tap on. Okay, let's continue on. Again, more animation happening. We just saw this uh, color keyboard and those that page or that spread in InDesign. Great. Very cool that we're doing this on our iPad, but more importantly, that this was all done from an InDesign document. That's right, including the animation. So let's switch back to InDesign and take a look at how this is done. Now, in InDesign, I'm gonna go ahead and go to that same spread where we saw with the uh, violin. And we're going to see how some of these things can be animated in so you can get a look at how this works. Now, InDesign has had animation actually since, I believe, CS5 or CS55. And those animations back then were always flash-based. So if you wanted to create an animation in InDesign, you basically your only choice was to export it as a Swift file and place it maybe on a website or something else, or export it as a FLA, a flash file, to open it up and do something flash-based. And since the world is kind of moving away from Flash, that anim all that animation stuff just kind of sat there on the shelf in InDesign with people really not using it. Now you get the chance to use it all over again because those animations are now HTML5 based inside your EPUB. So let's take a look at how it works. Um, I, and I, I used to love showing this stuff back in the day. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use it now. So I've got this panel and I want to fly that panel in from the left. So I just go in to my animation panel and uh, it shows me what it is that I have selected. I can choose how to animate it you know, on page load or some other um, action. And I even get presets. That's right, fly in from, uh, let's see here, fly in from left. 
I get a little preview with the butterfly, the InDesign butterfly, by the way, showing me what that's going to do. I can set the duration. I can tell it how many times to do it, whether it needs to loop, so forth and so on. So I can just use the preset or adjust it from here on out. Now I'm going to go ahead and select this, um, this transparent panel, and I want that one to fly in from the right. Okay, great. So far, so good. And then last but not least, well, let's, well, before we even move on, let's take a look at how that looks. So we have a brand new EPUB interactivity preview panel. So you don't have to waste time exporting it out, opening it up in an EPUB reader to see what your animation looks like. You can preview it first here in InDesign to see what it's going to do. And then when you're all set, export out the EPUB. So we can hit play. That will load it up. And we can see that it did do exactly what I asked it to do. The text on the left flew in, then the panel on the right flew in. The only thing though, is I kind of don't like them flying in one after the other. In other words, I'd like both of those two things to come in together. Well, I remember back in the day, I used to show that using the timing panel. So I can go in and I can select these two things. The two things that I actually, let's go in here. There we go, the ones on page load, here we go. And I can select these two things and I can say that they play together. So I've just linked those two things that they now happen at the same time. So when I go here and I reload this, let's clear it and then reload it. They both happen at the same time. So I can ch even change the stacking order in that timing panel for things that I want to happen before other things. So this is very, very, very easy without writing a single line of code. Now, last but not least, after that all happens, I kind of want these music notes to animate and continue animating uh, while you're reading this paragraph. So let's go ahead and select this. And we want to go to our animation panel and we want to choose the preset. Let's see, we want to say move right. We don't want it to fly in, we just want it to start moving. Now by default, it's going to happen very quickly. It's going to move left to right in one second. Well, I want that to be very slow, so let's do it in 45 seconds. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's go back to preview. Let's clear it again, and let's preview it again, and here we are. So our panels are going to happen, and our, our, our thing has happened very quickly. Hang on, it looks like I didn't set it right. Let's go here back to the animation, and yeah, it didn't take my uh, 45 seconds. Duration, 45 seconds. There we go. Now it's custom move right. I didn't tab out of it. And now let's go ahead and take a look one more time. Preview. Okay, everything happening, everything building up. And then there we go, the music notes moving. And it'll take 45 seconds for it to move all the way from one side to the other. So that's how easy it is to do these animations inside uh, Adobe InDesign CC for 2014. Now, last but not least, uh, these were buttons that appeared. So we go to our buttons and forms panel and we, uh, we, this is already set up to be a button, but it has no action. So let's go ahead and create an action that it plays a sound and then we can tell it which sound to play, excerpt number three, and then that's it. I basically have designed an interactive animated EPUB all in InDesign without having to know anything about writing the code behind the scenes, without having to do anything extra than just pick options from a menu, and I've, cre I've become an interactive designer. Now, also the beauty of this as being an EPUB is that it's cross-platform. I showed it on my iPad, but it could have been Mac, Windows, it could have been iOS, Android, it could be any platform that has an EPUB 3 compatible reader. So, that's it for what's new in InDesign CC in the October 2014 update. Hope you enjoy it, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm going to record a couple more videos, and then I'm going to head over to that keynote for Adobe Max. Take care. Bye.